Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag, brought to you by Red Raider Outfitter, the fans' favorite since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson, and I know I say this every mailbag, but we really do have a great round of questions. We have a lot of questions. They were so good, I'm going to do more than I usually do. Um, I'm a little late with this mailbag. I'm posting it. Normally, I post it on Friday. It's Sunday. Um, it's before the Super Bowl, by the way, when I'm recording this, so it may be posted after the Super Bowl, but... Uh, you know, better late than never, and these really are very good questions, so let's dive right into them. <clears throat> First one comes from Jay Mizo, who says, final number of conference wins for men's basketball. Yeah, this was asked before Texas Tech upset Kansas State, so now they're up to 2-10, and 10, and, uh, you know, um, I, I said a co like a week or so ago, after they beat Iowa State, that I could see three or four conference wins down the stretch. And then after they got blown out by Baylor, I was like, they may not win again. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a victim of, uh, or definitely guilty of going game to game. But uh, yeah, they've been playing really well here on this stretch. They beat In the last four games, beat Iowa State, beat Kansas State, two top 15 teams. Uh, it's been impressive. Uh, you know, and then they hung with Oklahoma State, who's been winning a lot recently, uh, you know, there in Stillwater. They get Oklahoma State at home in the season. They got Oklahoma, who I think is beatable, even though it's there in Norman. Um, and then they have some really tough games. So I'm going to stick with three to four. If I have to pick one number, I'll say four and be optimistic for once this basketball season. Uh, so I'll, I'll say four conference wins uh, for the Red Raiders this year. Chase Allen asks, if you were appointed czar of Tech Hoops, how would you turn this thing around? What changes would you make? He said, note this isn't a Fire Adams thing. It's just interested in my take. Yeah. You know, and again, I think you asked this before they won that game against Kansas State, um, which shouldn't make that big of a difference in the grand scheme of things. But, I mean, they are showing some improvement uh, overall. Um, they're, they're showing some good things. I think what I would really do at this point, and if you're saying czar of Texas Tech basketball, I mean, I guess that would be Mark Adams. But I'm going to take the like the stance of, like, say, Kirby Hoka, the athletic director. He's the czar of Texas Tech sports, really. Uh, by title, anyways. Um, what I would do is I would go with a head coach after the season and be like, what happened? You know, you need to level with me. Where's your head? How invested are you in this program? Um, because, you you know, we're invested in you. Uh, and then I would interview the players and get their honest takes, which I think they do anyways. Uh, and then I would talk with the big money donors and you know I think most people out there know some of the guys I'm talking about and and get everyone's side of the story all right and then I would take at least a half a day if not a day and think about everything that's thrown in there you know uh, everybody's opinion and try and decide what is really going on and I talk to the assistant coaches as well um, just get everyone's take and then I'd get the head coach and the big money donors together and make them hash it out. Make people swallow, you know, especially the head coach, you know, swallow your pride. Apologize if you have to. Get on the same page. Everyone start communicating because everybody involved, especially the head coach, the big money donors, they want Texas Tech to win. The players want to win. Um, you know, they want to. They know if they get success, it's going to be good for them individually as well. As do the 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 assistant coaches so find out who really wants to be a part of texas tech basketball who really wants to invest the time and the the effort all that um their souls i mean that's what it's going to take that's what it takes to win at this level uh and then i would try and you know give them to hash it out and move forward and then see who on the coaching staff should remain who on the roster should remain what where they want to move forward and you know, I've been very much like, man, it really seems like Adams needs, is going to need to go. But without knowing, without having these conversations, I can't say that. Um, I think it behooves everybody for everybody to get along and for it to work out. I mean, I, I think Adams is a great story. He's a West Texas story. He's a Texas Tech story. And he's shown he can get the job done. But he has to show a level uh of desire and want to um and if he can do that and the players respond like they did 
you know, like they have here recently in those wins over Iowa State and Kansas State, then you move forward. But there's got to be a, a clear path. Everyone has to be on the same page, or then you got to make a move, and you you got to basically blow it up. And it's easier if you make the right hire to. I mean, look what Jerome Tang did, has done at Kansas State, and there's other examples, but that's one right in our face. Uh, that you can bounce back within a season or two. So that is what I would do. I would sit everybody down, gather all the information, I'd meet with them individually, and then get groups together and be like, look, y'all, you really want to do this or do we need to make a move? So that's what I would do. OBX Raider says, do you think the NCAA will be able to create and enforce rules to get the NIL chaos under control or will unlimited pocketbooks rule the game? Yeah, I think for the most part, unlocked pocketbooks are going to rule the game. I mean, that's the example at every level, whether it be the TV, the, the presidents, the coaches, the players, it's, you know, the golden rule. They want they want the money, and I'm not judging that. That's just what it is. Um, the Supreme Court ruled on NIL, name, image, likeness, and Pandora's box has been open, and the NCA has shown it's, it's toothless uh, for the most part, especially when it comes to college football. Um, they have very little hold on college football or power at all. Um, Honestly, college football could probably do without just the NCAA um, for the most part. There are some uh, recruiting guidelines in terms of the calendar and stuff like that that the NCAA does that serves its small purpose, but that could easily be replaced. I, I don't think in all sports that the NCAA will be able to do anything. They'll, so some people could have some jobs there. They'll, you know, They'll introduce regulation and do some things, but it, it's not going to be anything significant. This is what it's going to be. There's going to be crazy stories all the time coming out in regards to NIL. And, uh, you know, it depends. I, there's some people I respect on both sides of the fence, people who think, heck, yeah, they should be paid. And there's some people who think, like, this is this is going to ruin college athletics. So, and what's funny is, like, my personal viewpoint is I agree with both of them. You know, I think players should be paid more, should be more compensated than they were back in the day. But also... I, this may indeed ruin college sports. So I, I'm on the fence. Like, I'm just as interested as everybody else to see how it all plays out. But in terms of the NCAA, will they be able to put the genie back in the bottle? Absolutely not. It's out. Pandora's box has been open. And uh, it's going to be chaos. All right, get your ass tomorrow to ask. He says, uh, best high school defensive and offensive recruit for two, uh, the 2023 class and uh, way too early final ranking for the, the 24 class. And also quarterback Will Hammond, future four-star, and do we have an edge to hold on to him? Any recruits in 24, uh, we should watch out for to become Red Raiders. All right. Well, that's a lot, but they're good recruiting questions, so I'm going to answer them all to the best of my ability. Uh, best high school defensive and offensive recruit. You know, I'm going to have to go with Jordan Sanford on uh, defense. I mean, he's a highest rated recruit. I think even Joey McGuire said that uh, – you know, there's a good chance he'll play as a true freshman. He's going to play at corner. He's got great speed. People that I respect who have seen him in person love his game, so he's a real deal. Um, you know, uh, I know, that, like I said, I know the staff really likes him. In my interviews and dealings with him, he seems like a – some of these guys said don't seem like human beings. <laughs> they're like robots because they're talking to the media, which I understand. Um, or they're just being fake, you know, and uh, – or, or, or kind of out there, to be honest. He seems to have a good head on his shoulder, so, you know, I think Sanford's a good bet. I also really like Dylan Spencer, the 6'5", 245-pound edge rusher that you flipped from Texas late. I think he could be a, a, a great player. Uh, offensively, man, I, you know, I kind of go back and forth. Um, some of the offensive linemen, I really like the offensive line class. Um, some of the receivers, too, uh, you know, but I think – I gotta go with Jake Strong because of the quarterback. He's gonna be the third quarterback listed. It's such an important position. I mean, third quarterback on on the depth chart already. You know, this spring, um, it's such an important position. Like I said, and uh, you know, I think he has all the tools. And, and again, a really good head on his shoulders. So I know he's not as highly rated as some of the other offensive recruits. And I mean, I could name a couple of the offensive linemen too that I, I you know, I think they're gonna be really good down the line. But. I think Jake Strong is one to watch. I think he's going to be a fan favorite, and I think he could be, like, if he gets, you know, his opportunity in time, he could put up some really monster numbers. I mean, like, 
old Mike Leach air raid type numbers uh, if he gets that opportunity. Uh, in terms of way too early final ranking at 24, well, yeah, from a good source, they're, it's, they're not going to take as many because they just don't have the spots um, in terms of like it won't be a full class like 25, but maybe more like around 20 or 21. That will hurt the rankings some. But I do think it's going to be a higher rated uh, class than uh, in terms of uh, rating per recruit than even this last one, which was top, a top 25 group. So uh, I'm going to say right around 25 again. Between, somewhere between the 20 and 25, uh, which is great. I mean, you do that every year, Tech's going to be a tw top 25 program every year, so for the most part. So, and you get, you know, uh, a factor quarterback, a game changing quarterback, then hey, uh, you do something special. All right. Any recruits in 24 that we should watch out for to become Red Raiders? Well, I mean, I'll give you two on offense that I really like. Micah Hudson is a receiver who he's going to be here on junior day, March 4th. And uh, Casey Poe, offensive lineman, uh, who's going to visit later in March during spring ball. Both those guys are recruited coast to coast. Micah Hudson's like a top 10 recruit or something like that. I mean, uh, he's an amazing uh, player. Nigel Smith is another guy, defensive lineman. Uh, Nigel Smith the second. Blue chip guy, Steve Wolfong wrote about him that he's visiting uh, for Junior Day on March 4th as well. I mean, you get those three guys, and then I take it back. It's going to be a top 20 class. Uh, <laughs> but if you get two of those guys, that'd be huge. I mean, they're big, big, big-time recruits wanted by everybody in the country, and they are seriously considering Texas Tech, so watch out for those three. Great questions. Uh, get your Esther Morris. Denver Red Raider wants to know, uh, the high-profile uh, head coach of the Colorado Buffaloes, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, uh, said in the future he wants his roster to look like this. 40% undergrad transfer, 40% grad transfers, and 20% high school recruits. He said the mix sounds a little strange. He said, uh, have I ever heard Joey McGuire a comment on the mix of the roster he wants? Yeah, I have. He's told me flat out he wants it to be almost exclusively of high school recruits. Now, you're always going to need to go, no matter how well you recruit the high school ranks, and they're doing it really well right now, uh, McGuire and Co. are, uh, but there's always going to be circumstance that will lead. Like, we have a hole we got to plug here through transfers. And why not? You know? So, I would say probably uh, the mix would be more like 85 to 90% of high school and the rest transfers. So, in terms of grad and undergrad, I don't I mean, you prefer to have more eligibility for them, of course. But, no, they, it, this roster will be made up primarily of high school recruits. That is what McGuire said. Like, look me in the eye, deadpan. Like, that's what we want. All right, J. Luke Raid says, why hasn't Kirby Hoka, the athletic director, placed any pressure on men ba men's basketball publicly? Well, because he shouldn't, in my honest opinion. I know there's a lot, there's a clamor from, from fans, and I understand you're emotionally, you're fanatics, and that's great. Thank God you are, I wouldn't have a gig, right? So I, I never take that for granted. But, like, whether it be someone like in my position, you want me to, like, debrade a coach or a player for playing poorly, or you want to... Uh, athletic director official uh, to, to do the same, you know, publicly make some kind of statement, but I don't think it's his place. Now, maybe after the season, obviously, if they make a change, um, or, it, you know, I think he should play it close to the vest. I think he should be quiet right now. You don't want loudmouth athletic directors, in my opinion. That almost never works out well. You need to let your employees that you've, you're paying big money to uh, do their job. Now, I understand Adams hadn't lived up to uh, expectations this year and there could be several reasons for that but I really do not think that Hoka should say anything publicly right now about the state of, of the men's basketball program especially during the season Syntex Red Raider asks he says out of the new teams the new Big 12 teams Houston, Cincinnati UCF and BYU he said which stadium are you looking forward to visiting and why? Uh, yeah UCF uh, because it's in Florida, <laughs> between Ohio, Florida, Utah, and I mean, I'm, I was born in Houston. I was just in Houston, eh. uh, although I love Texas, of course. Uh, I always will. Uh, out of the, the new teams, UCF, because uh, Florida is beautiful. Um, I don't, I honestly, without, I don't know how close they are to the beach, but they're close enough. It's a heck of a lot closer to the Florida beaches than the uh, Cincinnati is <laughs> so out of those four and in terms of the best atmosphere in it and all that like just straight football it would probably be BYU TTU Braves Rock says how many tacos can you eat in one sitting that's a great question you know 
we're talking about, for me, like crunchy beef taco with cheese and lettuce, tomato, or whatever. Uh, there's the standard taco. Uh, like, I could eat 10. If all the conditions were right, I was starving and all that, you know, I could eat 10. Um, and you got to determine, like, say what size, but regular size, crunchy beef taco with cheese, lettuce, the fixings, you know. I could eat 10. What I normally eat, you know, three to five, if you're, like, eating tacos at home or something, you know, um, then that's what I'll do, and I'm, I'm full. But what could I do? Yeah. I mean, I've housed a 10-pack of Taco Bell tacos, like, in my youth before. Uh, it's harder for me to get it, to lose it now, of course, but, uh, man, I love tacos. All right. TTU Dad 2012 says, what is your favorite tech football football player from each decade you have seen play live? Ooh, this is tough, because... This isn't going to be like the best players from each decade, but just who for me personally. Um, in the 90s, it's going to be Kevin Curtis because I was a student at Tech in the 90s and uh, he was an All-American safety. And There were some games where it looked like all was lost, Tech was going to lose, and he would come up with some big hit or big interception um, that won games. And I love safety. Safeties and linebackers are my favorite players to watch. Like I just... I love those positions, the aggressive nature of those positions and what they get to do. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Oh, and then 2000s, you know, I want to go with Crab, Crabtree. Um, there's some obvious choices there. Another one for me, though, is Wes Welker. He, uh, oh, and by the way, the 90s, I mean, Zach Thomas would be one to throw out there, of course, but uh, he didn't play when I was a student there. And congratulations to Zach on uh, being enshrined in the Hall of Fame. One of my all-time favorite interviews, we had him on the Rock and pregame when he was inducted in the Ring of Honor, and just tremendous insight into his work ethic, work ethic and uh, preparation, and it's no surprise why uh, you know he's a Hall of Fame player, Ring of Honor player at college, and Hall of Fame in the NFL. Great player, but uh, just for me personally, Curtis. And then uh, same thing with Wes. He just made some amazing plays when it seemed like all was lost, you know, uh, despite some other, so many other great players during that era. Um, Crabtree's up there though for sure. Uh, in terms of in terms of the uh, 2010s, this current decade, I mean, this is a no-brainer. I'm gonna go with it. Is uh, Patrick Mahomes? I mean, he was recruited when I first started here. Got to watch his whole progression. Uh, simply put, he did the miraculous on the regular, and he still does uh, all the time. And that's really his genius. Is he does things that you almost every game that you like never seen before or you didn't think was possible and uh, just very talented uh, but also has uh, something between the ears that makes him really special as well and uh, what, a, what a great athlete to get to cover uh, in your career it was just it was wonderful Lance 4523 asked he said if our basketball team was healthy this year do you think uh, do do I feel we would look a lot different? Yeah, of course. I mean, Amac doesn't look like the same player he you know he was when he came in in terms of I mean he broke his foot so he's not he was he's not as, as good a shape and he hadn't played a lot. Uh, he was one of the top transfer portal targets in the country. Period. Um, Bacho, I mean, you look at how he was in Maui against really good competition like Ohio State and uh, Creighton and he dominated. So and he's a shell of his former self. So I mean, yeah. Uh, that, that's really hurt. Pop Isaac's missing time. May, you know, yeah, that, that's not, that hasn't helped. So it would have been interesting to see if they could have put it all together and they were healthy from the beginning. Um, I don't, how many more wins it would have been, I will never know. But yeah, it would have looked a lot different for sure. It would have been a lot bigger team. All right, final question comes from Teeny Pepper. He says, can you talk a little bit about the desirability of, of the head coach position uh, at Tech Men's Basketball? He said, I'm going to read this whole thing because he, you know, he's making a point. He said, just assuming we have that role to fill sooner than later, he said, you'd think that uh, with our recent success and facilities, it would be a pretty great gig. But I doubt you're getting guys, uh, some of the top guys. He said, if you aren't in the running for those types of coaches, is, that, is this really that great of a destination? Well, I think that you just aren't going to get some of these top names is an assumption. And I don't know where that assumption comes from. To answer your question just straight up, it is a great destination, and I'll give you my reasons why. You have some of the best facilities, you know, top five, top ten facilities, um, and I may be underselling that uh, in terms of the arena, the practice facility, and all that, in the entire country. You're playing in, and I think, and this is hard to 
to debate against, to be honest, the best basketball conference in the country. And it's only going to get better with the new schools. Um, and then you play for one of the best fan bases. I mean, every time there's a poll, anytime Tech has a big winner, um, whether it be Omaha or going to the Final Four, or the football team, you know, win, wins 10 games or goes to a bowl game, I mean, fans show out. It's a great fan base. So uh, you put all that together, and the fact that you're in a true college town, you're not in the Metroplex, you're not in Houston, you're in West Texas. I mean, you could become the guy, one of the most important people in the entire region of one of the biggest states in the country. Uh, I mean, yeah. And also, now Texas Tech has more of, of a tradition. I mean, it's, they've shown they got within seconds of winning the national title. It can be done at Texas Tech. Um and so you put all that together, it is a great destination for uh, a men's basketball coach. And also, and I'm joking with this, if you have a good first season, you'll know you'll get a contract extension and get more money. All it takes is the first good season. No, I, I'm joking kind of about that. But, no, it's a great destination for men's basketball uh, just in general. I think a lot of the, the things that have been put out there in terms of you can't recruit to love, but you can't do this have been blown out of the water by football, basketball, and certainly baseball and all the other sports track. Uh, golf, uh, keep go down the list. Um, you can recruit to Texas Tech. You can win big at Texas Tech. Uh, and you can win it all at Texas Tech. And uh, not only that, but uh, you'll be beloved by the fan base uh, when you do so. So, yeah, I, I would not say that anybody is unattainable in terms of uh, basketball coaches unless their situation is just so great. You know, um, Tech's right up there uh, in, in the sport now, which is a great thing to say because it really wasn't not that long ago. But... That's where we find ourselves with uh, Red Ritter basketball. And we find ourselves at the end of the mailbag. It truly was a great mailbag. I, I really I want to give props to the Inside the Red Ritter subscribers. I think you asked some amazing questions. It was all over the map, but all of them were good and on point. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you all watching, and until next time.